there nothing more treasured by audiences than a story of a boy and his dog? Well, how about a story of a boy and his dragon? Tonight, we turn our focus to How to Train Your Dragon, a great animated film with a not-so-great title. It sort of sounds like a Game of Thrones infomercial, and that's not really what the film is. It was released in theaters on March 26, 2010, and was directed by Chris Sanders and Dean DeBlois. Both of them also worked on the script, which is based off the same name children's book by Chrisetia Cowell. The film stars the voices of Jay Baruchel, Gerard Butler, America Ferreira, Craig Ferguson, Jonah Hill, and Kristen Wiig, and was produced by DreamWorks Animation. Last year when I presented Shrek, I lightly touched on the fact that DreamWorks Animation has a very almost inconsistent quality when it came to their films. There have been modern classics like The Prince of Egypt and Kung Fu Panda. There have been lighthearted comedies like Madagascar and Megamind. And then there have been the bottom of the barrel critical failures like The Boss Baby, Home, and Shark Tale. But to each his own. Uh, fortunately for us all, How to Train Your Dragon falls into the first category. If it didn't, I probably wouldn't be up here talking about it. Um, the studio acquired the rights to the books in 2004, and the project went into development a few years later. Peter Hastings, a story editor on popular animated series like Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain, was chosen to direct. Unfortunately, after the passing of his wife, he left the project. Chris Sanders and Dean DeBlois were selected to take his place. They had previously worked together at Disney and were probably best known for co-directing and writing Lilo and Stitch. Interestingly enough, Lilo and Stitch in How to Train Your Dragon both deal with protagonists who are outsiders befriending misunderstood creatures. And if you look real close, you might just see some resemblance between Stitch and Toothless. Chris and Dean were not taking on an easy task when they agreed to take over How to Train Your Dragon. Peter Hastings' original vision of the film was a far contrast than what was released in theaters. It followed the books much closer and had a much sweeter and whimsical tone which isn't exactly what the studio wanted. After four years of development, Chris and Dean were brought in and had about 15 months to completely revamp the project. This was also their first foray into computer animation after knowing only hand-drawn at Disney, so it was quite the challenge. The original version of the film was, like I said, much more lighthearted in tone and also was very heavy on Norse mythology, so the likes of Thor and Odin came into play. In the books, Vikings almost treat dragons like cowboys would treat horses, which is probably where the whole training your dragon aspect came from. But the filmmakers decided that Vikings should be at war with dragons to give the film more conflict, and it was decided that the protagonist, Hiccup, the smallest Viking, would be the one to end the feud with the dragons and establish the Viking-dragon partnership seen in the later books. The version of Toothless in the film is completely different than the version of the book. In the book, Toothless is a very tiny little thing, almost like an iguana, and doesn't get big enough for Hiccup to ride until the sixth book. There's 12 books in Cal's original series. It was decided that Toothless's appearance and size would be changed, which gave filmmakers more opportunity story-wise. They, they based Toothless's new look on that of salamanders, horses, dogs, and cats, which may have just been an excuse to spend a lot of time watching cat videos at work, but you know, it worked. Academy Award winning cinematographer Roger Deakins was brought on to help achieve the lighting of the film. That's him right there. Um, if you ever felt bad for Leonardo DiCaprio for winning an Oscar after losing for six times, um, Roger won finally on his 14th Oscar nomination. Uh, the look of the film was partially inspired by Avatar with regards to combining realistic world with a, real, with a fantastical environment and sweet, sweet 3D technology. The voice cast of this film worked double time. Apparently, they recorded all their dialogue before Chris and Dean were brought on to completely revamp the film. They had to bring them all back in after the rewrite, so somewhere out there is a whole film's worth of unused How to Train Your Dragon voice recordings. Jay Baruchel voices Hiccup, probably best known for comedies like Tropic Thunder, She's Out of My League, and This is the End. Gerard Butler, the star of 300, plays his father, the Viking chief Stoic. One of the bigger changes from the original version of the film was their estranged father-son relationship was given more spotlight in the script. Former Late Late Show host Craig Ferguson plays Gobber, 
Ugly Betty star America Ferreira plays Astrid. And the supporting cast features the likes of Jonah Hill, Kristen Wiig, Christopher Mintz Plasse, a.k.a. McLovin, and T.J. Miller. They basically borrowed Judd Apatow's Rolodex. Many of the cast recorded their dialogue together, which isn't normally done in an animated film. The filmmakers wanted to take advantage of all these natural comedians and give them a chance to improv and play off one another in the recording booth. But who or what voiced Toothless? His voice was a mixture of other animals like whales and elephants and the voice of the film's sound designer, sound designer Randy Thom. Dean Dubois actually wrote dialogue for Toothless to help Thom better craft Toothless's sounds in certain situations. And this is pretty funny. The voice of the terrible terrors, they're the tiny dragons, you'll see them in the film. Their sound comes from viral video sensation Paco the Chihuahua, who makes a very interesting bark, barking slash growling noise. Um, they contacted the dog's owner and brought him in to record and paid him $100 for his time. So that's making it big on the internet. Again, How to Train Your Dragon was released in theaters on March 26, 2010. If you guys had the opportunity to see this on the big screen, it was a real treat. I saw it in IMAX 3D, and to see some of the flying and aerial shots on a big screen like that, it was just it was really cool. On a budget of $165 million, it earned almost $500 million at the box office worldwide. It is DreamWorks Animation's highest grossing non-Shrek film, and I, I mean that literally, How to Train Your Dragon is number five, and then the four Shrek films come after it. It received near universal critical acclaim, having a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was nominated for two Academy Awards, Best Animated Feature and Best Original Score. It faced stiff competition that year as it lost Best Animated Feature to Toy Story 3 and Original Score to Social Network, which to me makes no sense because John Powell's music in this film is iconic. The theme from this film where they're first flying is probably one of the best pieces of music in modern day cinema. And honestly, who can remember the music from the social network? But anyway, end of that tangent. It is worth noting, though, that the film won the Annie Award for Best Animated Feature, and the Annies are just like the Oscars for animation. A sequel, How to Train Your Dragon 2, was released in the summer of 2014, and a third film to conclude the trilogy will hit theaters today. How about that? Um, the popularity of the franchise goes beyond the films, though. A few short films were produced. There were three television series, the first two airing on Cartoon Network and the third on Netflix. There were graphic novels, video games, and even an arena show with acrobats and animatronics. Amongst all the powerhouses from Disney and Pixar, How to Train Your Dragon has earned a place among some of the greatest animated films of all time, as has its sequel. Time will tell for the third film, but the reviews are looking pretty great, so I think it's safe to say, like Toy Story, it's not only one of the greatest animated film trilogies, it's probably just one of the greatest film trilogies of all time. And I know there's a Toy Story 4 coming in like four months, and there's always a chance for How to Train Your Dragon 4, because Hollywood. Um, but the story of How to Train Your Dragon is a timeless one. It's a story of friendship, not between a man and an animal, but just between two kindred spirits. These films tell a true coming-of-age story that deal with powerful themes such as growing up, sacrifice, loss, and the relationships that define us. These are themes that can resonate with adults and children, and it's animated films like this that will stand the test of time. So before you head to theaters and see how the story ends, this is how it began. This is step one of How to Train Your Dragon. Mm -hmm.